Okay, so we have this equation and we want to solve for x. Very, very typical type of algebra one level problem or any uh, algebra course. It could be college algebra, intermediate algebra, introductory algebra, even, uh, well, not pre-algebra. This might be a little bit beyond pre-algebra. But if you're taking any type of, you know, high school level math or even college level basic math, you're going to have to be able to solve something like this. So we're going to be solving for x. And what do we do? Okay, do you know the steps to solve this equation? Well, if you don't know, I'm going to teach you them, but you definitely need to know how to deal with an equation like this. And we're going to talk more about what type of equation this is and uh, even more importantly, what uh, what you need to do to solve it. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are having a tough time in math, maybe you don't think you're good at math, maybe you don't like math. If you don't like math, hey, I get that. But you, you know, if you're taking a math class, you still have to do well in it. And anyone and everyone can do well in math. What you need is one, you need the desire, and you got to be willing to, um, you know, work. All right, so that's on you. But beyond that, what you also need is excellent math instruction. And this is where some of you might be having a tough time. So if you uh, don't feel like you're getting enough instruction, or maybe you're not connecting with your teacher's teaching style, whatever the case might be, I've been teaching math for decades, and I really like to think of myself as explaining math. I don't like to use textbook-like terms. I really break things down in super clear and understandable ways. So anyone and everyone can learn this stuff. So if you're, at, if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, I can definitely help you out. Now, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section on it, and there's a lot of them out there, by the way, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Acuplace or CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam, vocational school um, application. You're going to have to take a test that has math on it. There's all types of tests out there that have a math section on it. So if you're uh, looking at taking one of these exams, I can help you prepare and pass those, uh, those tests. If you homeschool, you must check out my homeschool math courses. I was just ranked number one, voted number one for middle and high school uh, homeschool math courses from a major uh, homeschool national publication. Very excited about that achievement. And um, if you need notes, well, don't panic. I'm going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. But you need to learn how to take excellent notes. It's uh, really one of the only ways... Um, well, I don't want to say the only ways, but if you don't take great math notes, you're not going to be able to get great grades in math. Right? This is so important, and it's really the beginning or starting of your foundation as a math student. Okay, so start improving your notes, and everything will start getting better for you. All right, so let's get into this problem. Of course, if you want to um, pause the video and put your solution uh, uh, into the comment section, that would be great. And, of course, I'll check your work here in just one second. But let's talk about this problem what are we dealing with what what's uh what type of equation is this well i'm going to go ahead and give you a hint it starts with an r okay uh so what would we call this all right do you know what it is put that into the comment section as well so the key is this part of the problem right and we're like hmm this is telling us something well this is called a radical equation okay so right here we have an equal symbol okay so this is an equation what type of equation? It's a radical equation. Now, in algebra, when you're studying equations, there's all types of equations. And you can't confuse uh, what to do with one type of equation with another. So when you first start taking algebra, you start learning something called linear equations. That's like your basic 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. Then you start moving to other type of equations like systems of equations, uh, quadratic equations, uh, here, of course, radical equations, uh, rational equations, uh, on and on and on. And as you could uh, continue to learn algebra, you're going to start learning exponential equations, logarithmic equations. So you can see um, as you you know continue to learn math, you're learning a lot of different type of equations. And what you do for one type of of equation is completely different than when you uh, different approach than what you might do in another type. So again, how are you going to be able to kind of keep track of all this stuff? You got to take great math notes. You got to practice. Okay. All right. So we're talking about radical equations. So what is the procedure to solve a radical equation? Well, basically what we, what we, uh, what we want to do here is get this radical by itself. We can't do anything until we get this part of the problem 
all by its lonesome down here. Okay, so we want this uh, radical x minus 5 by itself equal to a uh, one number. Okay, so this is what we need to kind of do first. Okay, so uh, how do we do that? Well, think of this as just like temporarily as like an x, okay? <clears throat> In other words, like a variable. So if I told you uh, solve for x in this equation, 2x plus 3 is equal to 11, all right, what would you do to solve this? You would subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, and then you would go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 2, and you would get x. Basically doing the same thing here, and we're going to solve for this uh, radical. Now, just so you know, a lot of you out there are saying, oh, these are square root equations. Well, that's a pretty good description of uh, what this is. This is, in fact, a square root. But in algebra, the square root symbol, okay, is called a radical because I can have like the cube root of something. Okay, that's not a square root. So get, uh, get used to calling that symbol a radical unless you're talking about, hey, find the square root of four. You're not going to say find the radical you know, of uh, four, you know, that's obviously something different, but these type of equations just, you want to say this is a radical equation. All right, so this is going to be the first step. We need to go ahead and rewrite this equation and get this radical, all right? This, so this particular problem is going to be the square root of, um, or uh, radical x minus five is equal to a number, okay? Or the square root of x minus five is equal to a number. And then at this point, to solve the remainder of this problem, we're going to go ahead and square both sides of the equation. And when we do that, it's going to drop this radical symbol, this square root symbol way, and you're going to get x minus 5 is equal to uh, whatever the square of this number is. Okay, then you're going to solve for x, and then we're going to check our work. So that's basically what you're going to be doing here. Now, if you think you can do this based upon my quick overview of uh, kind of the procedure, the steps, go to pause the video and try it on your own. I think that's always... You know, don't be afraid to make a mistake in math, by the way. That's how you learn, right? Uh, uh, you know, if you think you're going to do math perfectly, if you don't, you know, get your answer right, that has nothing to do with anything in terms of your ability to improve in math, okay? you got to figure out what you're doing wrong and correct that, but that's just part of the, the deal. So if you're, you know, want to try this problem, go ahead and try it. But I'm going to get into the actual solution right now. So let's get into it. Okay, so again, I need to focus on... Uh, getting the x minus 5 all by itself. So the first thing is I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, and that gives me 2 times uh, x minus 5, or square root of x minus 5, excuse me, uh, is equal to 8. Okay. All right, so I think I misspoke over there. Please forgive me. I do a lot of math videos, and uh, I try not to misspeak. But uh, anyways, uh, let's move on. All right, so we have 2 times the square root of x minus 5 is equal to 8. So we're almost there. Okay, I want again, uh, again, I want to get this square root of x minus 5 by itself. So I have this 2 hanging out here. So I need to divide uh, the equation both sides, of, or sorry, both sides of the equation by 2. And that will allow me to just get this square root of x minus 5 all by itself. So I've got the square root of x minus 5 is equal to 8 divided by 2, which of course is 4. Okay, so at this point, uh, we solved for uh, the square root. Okay, the radical, it's all by itself. It's isolated. Now we, I can go ahead and take the square of both sides, and that's what I'm doing right here. Okay, I'm squaring both sides, and the reason why I'm squaring both sides is anytime you square a square root, okay, like this, that you basically, if there's an x in here, and you square the square root, you're just left with x, okay? So by doing this, I'm going to be left uh, with x minus 5, and then of course 4 squared. I got to do, uh, I got to square both sides of the equation. 4 squared is 16. And you can see here, this is going to be pretty cool. I can solve for x. All I need to do is just add 5 to both sides of the equation, and I get x is equal to 21. Okay, so that is the solution, but we're not quite done yet. What you want to do is you want to get in the habit of checking your work. Okay, so when it comes to radical equations, all right, you're, it's, it's a mandatory step that you check your solutions, okay, because you can get things uh, like extraneous solutions. But just to know right now, I'll talk, uh, I've done future videos, or sorry, not future videos, I've already done videos on extraneous uh, uh, solutions, and I will do more uh, videos in the future about this topic. Very, very important, but just know right now, when you get your answer, you need to go ahead and check to see if, in fact, that works in the original equation. So let's check to see if x equals 21 works. And let's go back to the original equation. And what we're going to do 
is replace that X with 21 and see what happens, okay? So here is what we have, okay? We replace this X with 21, and when we do that, I have 21 minus 5 is 16, so I have 2 times the square root of 16 plus 3, and we want to see if the left-hand side is going to equal to the right-hand side. So I have an 11 over here. We have to see if this left-hand side, when we simplify all this math, is going to be equal to 11. So let's go ahead and continue on. So I have 2 times the square root of 16, and uh, when we're doing this, uh, you want to take the principal square root. That's just the positive uh, version. So the square root of 16, you're going to think of that as a positive 4 not positive, negative 4. It's very confusing, um, and it's kind of a subtle technical difficult, technical uh, thing that's really not emphasized uh, in enough um, algebra course textbooks. I got through the years. I just, you know, it's not, um, it confuses students. So in other words, let me just show you real quick. This is important. If I was solving the equation x squared is equal to 4, and I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to say x is equal to positive negative 2. That is correct, okay? So a lot of people are saying, well, you took the square root of 4. Why isn't it positive negative 2? Well, when we're solving for roots in like in a quadratic equation, you're going to consider that negative sign. But when you're doing something like just taking a regular square root, not in terms of an equation like this, you just keep that positive version. That's the principal square root. That's a small little technical uh, thing that does gives confuses students, and it's a good question. Okay, so hopefully this clears up any confusion. So we have the square root of 16 is 4. Okay, so we have 2 times 4, of course, is 8. So now we have 8 plus 3. 8 plus 3, last time I checked, is 11. So 11 equals 11. That's a true statement. Therefore, okay, we plugged in this 21. It caused us to have a true statement. That is, by definition, what a solution is. So x equals 21 is, in fact, uh, the solution. All right, so how many of you out there got this right? Okay, if you got this right all by yourself and you really had a you know, full command of the problem and the concepts, then I must go ahead and give you a nice 1985, that was a great year, uh, flat top haircut, A plus 100%. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a few extra stars uh, so you can feel extra special today. Nice job. Okay, very, very good. And again, uh, you know, it's not really not enough for you to get the answer right, uh, but you're not you know, being like really confident about what you're doing. Okay, that's good. But what's better is like, okay, I know exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. That's the mastery level that you should be uh, striving to get. So um, hopefully this video helped you out. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider helping me out by smashing that like button and uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have, um, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my uh, content. I make it for you, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.